Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with an Intel report, the series that aims to educate you on every unit in Command & Conquer Rivals. Today we're looking at one of the brand new units released in Update 1.3, the Nod Avatar. The Avatar Warmech is designed to counter the heaviest units in GDI's arsenal. Equipped with both an Obelisk-class laser cannon and a powerful flamethrower, the Avatar can dispatch enemy ground units with ease. The Avatar is Nod's counterpart to the Mammoth Tank. It's expensive and built from the Temple of Nod, but its laser cannon deals a stream of continuous heavy damage to enemy vehicles that dare to get close, and its flamethrower will annihilate any enemy infantry foolish enough to still be stood nearby when the Avatar begins its warpath. Avatars have Raider, meaning that this terrifying weaponry can be brought to bear as it wades through your opponent's army. As with other Raider units, use this to your advantage to keep mobile and to carve a bloody swathe through your opponent's infantry and vehicles. For all their fury against ground targets, Avatars are not equipped to handle enemy aircraft. The Kodiak or Basilisk are the most obvious counters, as when an Avatar strides onto the battlefield, it needs to be taken care of quickly. The Nightmare doesn't even end when the Avatar is finally destroyed, as its core quickly overheats and explodes, damaging whatever the Warmech didn't quite finish off before its end. The best way to beat an Avatar is to never let your opponent field it. If you keep pressure on both the launch pads and their harvester, your opponent will be forced into spending their Tiberium. Like the Mammoth, the Avatar is almost a win condition on its own. End the game quickly, or be prepared to throw hefty firepower at it. Check out my video on how to counter the double harvester tech build for how you can do this. So how do you fit this amazing new unit into your deck? Well, avatars are heavy late game units. As such, the only way you're going to be able to field one is either by scoring repeated kills on enemy harvesters, or likely by running two harvesters of your own. Due to their high cost, it is best to keep them as the only expensive unit in your deck. As such, here we run a very basic core of militants, lasers, flames, attack bikes, buggies, and then the avatar, with Oxana as a commander. Opening with rifles allows you to scout cheaply and hopefully deal with almost any threat using just the barracks units. The hope is to transition into War Factory only when you really need it, for example if you need the attack bikes to take out enemy aircraft. From here, you should do everything that you can to seize the first missile and try and take a harvester kill for the bonus. The aim, and the win condition of this deck, is to get the Avatar out as soon as possible. Run it through your opponent's army, and either seize the pads, or nuke their base directly. I'd also suggest making a beeline for their harvesters, as the Avatar can melt these ludicrously quickly. Alternatively, you may wish to swap the Flame Troopers out for a Giga Cannon, to deal with heavy armour that may come out early. This is a more expensive option, so it does require you to consider a second harvester when it's safe to pull it out. So those are my thoughts regarding the Nod Avatar, but what about you? Have you started running the Nod Avatar in Update 1.3? Or have you been struggling to fight against it? Let me know in the comments below! I hope that's helpful! Be sure to check out my other Intel reports if you're struggling against certain units, or looking for tips as to how to best apply a new unit in your deck. Also check out my Acting on Instinct series with analysis of game mechanics and solid advice on how to get ahead in Rivals. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and be sure to subscribe to be up to date and ahead of the game. Happy sailing, and see you on the battlefield!